This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. We have a very interesting story for you today. Have you heard about the man who got his uh, face blasted with a particle accelerator? Strangely enough, because of that, half of his face looks extra young. It has, like, stayed forever young. So we're going to talk about that and more. If you haven't had a chance to do so, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, Also, if YouTube doesn't notify you, which it probably won't, just know that every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Central, Uh, you will get a new episode of Into the Multiverse. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment, make sure you share this with your friends. Um, So I left my computer at home today. We're going to go old school. We're going to go from the phone. Actually, I don't think that's old school. I think the computer would be would be old school. Maybe 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 doing things from the phone is uh, is a little bit more modern. But either way, that's what we're doing. So uh, there's an interesting story that was on a curiosity in in the 70s. Russian scientist. Anatoly Bugorsky was a researcher at the Institute for High Energy Physics. He was uh, working with the Soviet particle accelerator that was known as the Synchrotron U-70. So this this was in the 70s. Uh, Now, on July 13th, 1978, he actually stuck his head into the synchrotron to check on a a malfunctioning piece of equipment uh, when all of a sudden he didn't realize it was on, didn't realize it was running, and bam! Um, a, a safety mechanism went, uh, went awry and uh, at exactly the wrong moment, shooting a proton beam straight through his head, which you would think, okay, it's either going to do nothing because it's you know protons or just particles, or you think it's going to kill him. Didn't do either, but uh, what he reported as experiencing is, is pretty interesting. He said that he didn't feel any pain uh, with the initial blast, but he reportedly saw a flash, quote, brighter than a thousand suns, end quote. That's how he described it. So the beam entered through the back of his head and exited uh, through his nose. And soon after, the left side of his face uh, swelled up and he was rushed to the hospital um, to be treated, but also to be studied because this was the first time anything like this had ever happened. Um, most people uh, believed that he'd be dead within a few days uh, at the most, but that didn't happen. He actually survived. It, it made you know it makes sense that doctors expected the worst because the kind of energy that Bogorsky's skull absorbed from this uh, proton beam um, it, it's ionizing radiation, so it's measured in uh, it's measured in gray. Um, now, as Gizmodo explains, the beam that struck Bogorsky's uh, head measured 2,000 gray when it entered his skull and about 3,000 gray when it exited. So for reference, if you don't know what uh, gray is or, or anything, absorbing more than just five grays at any time generally means death within four days. So with five gray, you're dead. This guy got uh, between two and 3,000. Now, because no one had ever experienced radiation in the, in the form of a proton beam moving at about, about the speed of light, a little bit less, but about the speed of light, uh, nobody, nobody knew what was going to happen. You know, all bets were off. Now, Bogorsky sur- survived longer than just a few days. In fact, um, he, at least in 2018, he, he's, and I believe continuing still, still alive and well. He was, uh, so last year he was 75 years old. The accelerator incident didn't leave him entirely unscathed, though. Uh, the beam burned a path through his skull and brain tissue, uh, and for the next couple of days after the event, the, the spots on his head where the beam entered and exited was uh, experiencing some skin peeling. But he, he lost the, the hearing in his left ear, and um, he experienced uh, constant tinnitus, like all, all the rest of his life. The left side of uh, Bogorsky's face gradually became paralyzed, and, and it's weird because it makes it look like, like half of his face is frozen in time. You know, it makes it look like half of his face has stayed young while the, the other half has aged. So one half has wrinkles, the other half doesn't. Uh, he's also suffered at least uh, six tonic-clonic, or or grand mal seizures, and um, also experienced uh, absence or uh, petite mal seizures. So, uh, for somebody who was considered to you know not be able to survive this incident, uh, and, and who who would have been considered to just 
you know, be dead almost immediately after the accident. Uh, things could have been much worse. So he, he was even able to complete his doctorate following the incident. Um, you know, he, he's not a superhero, of course, but it's still impressive. So for everybody who has ever wondered what happens if you put uh, your, your head or your hand inside of a particle accelerator, uh, you know, what, what happens? There you go. That's what happens. And, and you know, they're, they're a lot more dangerous than they seem. I, I think people kind of fall into one of two camps. Either they think that uh, particle colliders such as the LHC at CERN, it's either the most dangerous thing in the world and it's creating black holes that are going to swallow up the earth and, you know, all, all that stuff. Uh, it's either that or it's not harmful at all because it's doing the same thing that cosmic rays are, are, are doing in the atmosphere. Um, and the truth is a little bit somewhere in between. You know, yes, cosmic rays are doing the same thing, but we have to remember this is in a very, you know, in, in the LHC or in any particle collider, it's in a very specialized, like, localized place. Um, you know, it's sort of like if you just ha if you have a hose running, but then you put your thumb over it and it, it shoots out a lot uh, with, with a lot more force. You can think of it like that. You know, the atmosphere protects us from a lot of stuff, a lot of, like, cosmic stuff that comes in. So... We're not being blasted in the same way that a particle accelerator would, would do to a person, clearly, because uh, the sun doesn't, doesn't, doesn't uh, do this kind of stuff to us. Um, now, there is a danger to it. There's a lot that's unknown. There's a lot we don't know about what really happens during a particle collision. I mean, there is thoughts uh, years ago, and still continuing, that they might actually create miniature black holes. Uh, and th this is kind of what started the frenzy of people really worrying about uh, CERN and, you know, black holes and all this stuff. Um, but the same mathematics that predict the black holes are the same mathematics that predict uh, that if, if they occur, that they would close up basically imme immediately. They're, they're too small to, to grow and, and do any kind of damage. Uh, do we know that for sure? No, but you know, as one physicist, uh, uh, Dr. Sean Carroll pointed out, he said, you know, you don't know for sure when you open a can of spaghetti sauce uh, for for your spaghetti dinner. You don't know for sure that it doesn't house some kind of virus that's gonna, uh, you know, come out and infect you and the rest of the world and destroy mankind. You don't you don't know that for sure, but you take that risk because the chances are so low of that happening uh, that you know it's it's probably gonna be fine. Uh, it's it's the same kind of deal with with CERN. The, the chances are so low that uh, it, it, to them it's worth the risk. That's how they explain it. I know a lot of people aren't going to uh, agree with that. I still don't know exactly where I fall on that. I, I like to be realistic about it, but at the same time, you know, I, I don't know if uh, opening any kind of pathway to possible extra dimensions is necessarily a good idea because the whole Revelation 9 thing. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, you can check out my book with Tom Horn, Abaddon Ascending, and uh, many episodes of Into the Multiverse, uh, we've talked about that as well. And that's also a story that we're going to have to keep our eyes on. They're still sifting through a lot of data uh, at CERN. Now, yes, right now they're, they're, they're uh, they, they've shut it down for upgrades and things, but there's still a lot of data that they have to go through. They might discover something there. Uh, so we, we will wait and see. We will keep all of you updated. Uh, so I want to know what you think about this. Uh, did, you, did you have any idea what getting blasted in the face with a particle uh, accelerator beam you know, would actually do to a person? Uh, and... and um, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's an interesting story. I want to know what you think. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you haven't had a chance to do so already, please subscribe to this channel. Click the bell for notifications. And once again, remember, if YouTube doesn't notify you, you are going to get a new episode of Into the Multiverse every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Central. All right, everybody, thank you so much. And until next time, take care and God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself for the most unique special offer in Skywatch TV history. We proudly announce the Vault Declassified Special Collection. For your $35 donation during this very limited time offer, you'll receive the new book by Pentagon Analyst Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, Progressive Evil, How Radicals Are Redefining America's Rights, Making Her Globally Irrelevant for the End Times. Derek P. Gilbert's astonishing new book, Bad Moon Rising, Islam, Armageddon, and the Most Diabolical Double Cross in History, and the groundbreaking new book from Carl Gallup's Gods of the Final Kingdom, Unveiling the Secrets of the Raging Celestial War.
And now, in a Skywatch TV first, directly from Tom Horn's personal private vault, you'll receive completely free of charge the never-before-released Tom Horn Secret Files USB flash drive. This drive is not available anywhere else and comes completely loaded with hundreds of files, including the world-exclusive, behind-the-scenes, off-the-record video interview regarding perhaps the biggest scandal and cover-up in U.S. history. So hot, we're unable to discuss the specific contents on network television. This two-hour investigative interview has not been released anywhere else and provides new forensic information connected to the Robert Mueller report that may soon send shockwaves through Washington, D.C. and around the world. The Tom Horn Secret Files USB flash drive also includes the Defender Films full-length two-time Telly Award-winning documentary movie, Inhuman. The much sought after Defender Red Letter Edition Bible with expanded apocrypha on Kindle and digital files. Eastward Bible software. Brand new video presentations from the Watchmen Conference. A massive data library of ebooks with tens of thousands of pages and hours of bonus interviews on video with leading prophecy experts. The Tom Horn Secret Files USB flash drive is valued at over $500. Yours now absolutely free when you order the Vault Declassified Special Collection from Skywatch TV. But we're still not done. Skywatch TV's off-the-record series is backed by popular demand with the Gods of War edition on DVD, featuring exclusive interviews with Pastor Carl Gallops, Senior Pentagon Analyst Robert McGinnis, and Derek and Sharon Gilbert on the coming hyper-battle between the forces of God and the titans of biblical prophecy. This unprecedented collection sold separately holds a retail value of over $600. Yours now for only $35 plus shipping and handling. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime Skywatch TV exclusive offer that's too hot for network television, the Vault Declassified Special Collection. Available now at skywatchtvstore.com. Order online or call 1-844-750-4985.